Hello, good morning. My name is Thomas Graf. Uh, I'm one of the creators of Solium and co-founder and CTO of Isoelent, the company behind Solium. Today, today I'm talking about Envoy namespaces, um, which is probably a new term uh, because I, I basically just literally made it up. Usually I talk about kernel level BPF stuff. Today uh, my topic is more on the control plane scalability. Good. So let's dive in. I would like to set the context first of this talk. So I'm talking about scalability, but it's more the scalability of the control plane managing Envoy, less about Envoy itself. The reason why that's important to us is we are maintaining Solium and we are working with many Solium users, and many of them are at, at running at really large scale because that's a specialty of, of, of Solium. Solium provides advanced networking and security for cloud native workloads, which means that as these users also have intent and desire to either run or plan to run a service mesh based on Envoy, we typically see these users struggle with some of the con control plane aspects. So what I'm talking about today is how we are helping these users uh, scale service meshes or Envoy based meshes. doesn't have to be a service mesh in particular. So this is how you typically deploy Envoy uh, in combination with Cilium in a mesh configuration service to service. So not no edge, uh, no north valves, basically pod to pod service to service and so on. Like Envoy is running as a sidecar container inside the application pod as a separate container and there is an IP tables rule which will redirect all traffic into Envoy. Cilium is outside uh, running BPF code to do all of the network, all of the policy um, using BPF. Then on top of that, you run a control plane, right? This could be Istio, it could be something else, and all of your sidecars will connect up to that control plane to basically receive instructions on how to do routing, uh, how to, and to actually, for example, send metrics, and so on. If you look at this picture, it's pretty similar to this picture. Can you see the, the, the kind of the, the um, how this looks similar, like it's basically set up for a perfect DDoS scenario where you have many, 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 many endpoints hitting a centralized resource. And that's what we're typically seeing. So I'm gonna walk through some examples that we have, have seen here. So let's look at a like kind of a moderate scale example, um, both for a low churn and a high churn example. The low churn example would be when, when workloads are not actually not changing much. Uh, for that scenario, we're assuming basically one pod event per minute, per node, which means that one pod per minute is being, being, being added or being removed from the node on each node. And then the high churn one, that will be the one when you're actually scaling up and down or you're adding nodes or you're, you're actually running batch jobs. In that environment, you have 20 pods event per minute per node. Still not a massive amount. For this model scale, we're kind of looking at 500 nodes with 30 pods per node. So nothing massive, like moderate scale. The, the two resources that we've been seeing that have caused many issues is network traffic and CPU usage of the control plane, not on why we're talking about the control plane of this. From a CPU perspective, it's 90% of just, it's just protobuf encoding just encoding all of the communication that needs to go to all of the Envoy instances, and all of that control plane traffic needs to be on the network, so it will cause network traffic. So at low churn, we see relative, relatively moderate, moderate network traffic and CPU, like 11 megabytes per second. It's already, it's not nothing, but something that your network can handle, and you need about 12 vCPU. So it, you already need a, a pretty sizable VM, but you can, can still be a single VM if you want to. For high churn, we're already going into several hundred megabytes per second. And this is, this is still the moderate scale cluster. This is nothing uh, hyperscale yet. And you need several hundred vCPUs already. We can go further and actually go into kind of the cluster size that some of our users have, uh, multiple thousand nodes. For example, five clusters, 1,000 nodes each, 30 pots per node. Look at the numbers, like it just simply does not scale up. This is not Envoy, this is the control plane that can simply not uh, communicate with all Envoy instances in an efficient manner. You're running into thousands of vCPUs that you need at peak. So what we typically see or often see is that when you scale up and add a lot of nodes, let's say you actually add a couple of hundred nodes to your cluster, your control plane CPU will spike and is your control plane becomes um, un un unresponsive for, for several seconds or even minutes. So we have been looking at how we could potentially resolve this. And what we have been thinking about is and been working on is a shared Envoy model. 
This means what if we could actually have, instead of one envoy per pod, have one envoy per node, and share that envoy with all the pods, all the application pods. Very similar to how applications already share the same Linux kernel on that same node, right? We don't have a specific network stack or a specific storage stack for each pod. The kernel is there for all the applications, and the kernel has a concept of namespaces, which means the kernel can do resource segmentation and so on based on these namespaces. So bringing that same concept into Envoy allows to scale up. But very important. I'm not proposing, or we're not proposing to replace this model or replace the cycle model with this. This can work out very, very well at really large scale, but it also has disadvantages. It means that Envoy needs to be aware of, of, having mul or of serving multiple tenants. Envoy now needs to do resource management, right, because it's serving multiple tenants. Pod CPU limits will no, will no longer apply to your Envoy sidecar, and so on. So there's other issues that have to be solved at the same time. We see this as this can be a solution for your higher scale needs. So let's look at that. So on the right are now uh, basically the numbers uh, where we have um, still 15,000 total endpoints, but because we only have 500 nodes, we have 500 Envoys. Obviously, this does not impose any problems anymore for the two metrics that we have been tracking, network traffic and CPU. The even more interesting one is the high scale uh, one, which even in a high churn environment, it basically g goes down to a couple of dozen vCPUs and not thousands of them. And that's why we have been successfully, su successful scaling these users using this model. So that's the background. Let's look quickly into some of the details how this actually looks like. Uh, I won't have time to actually go over everything. If you want to learn more about this, feel free to uh, talk to me after the session. So injecting a shared Envoy, if we don't have an Envoy in the, uh, as a sidecar in the pod, how do we actually inject Envoy? Uh, if you use Solium, we can inject Envoy automatically on demand outside of the pod, which means any traffic entering or leaving a pod can be redirected through Envoy using BPF. We can do this in two ways. We can do this on the more traditional network level, so similar to an IP tables redirect rule like for each network packet. But even more interestingly, we can do this at connect system call level, which means that as your application issues a connect system call to open a TCP connection, we will translate the IP address in there automatically to, to go to the sidecar proxy running on that node, which means there is no network DNAT, there's no network mangling at all. You, ha you basically do the redirection when the connection is set up once for the connection. And if you're doing a persistent HTTP connection between your app and, and, and the Envoy sidecar, you pay this cost once, and then it's basically, you have no cost um, beyond that. It also means that there is no requirements to modify any aspect of the network stack in the pod. So you don't need any, any sort of um, privileges, nothing. That the application pod remains entirely unmodified. The application pod can even be privileged itself. It cannot remove the redirection to the sidecar, and so on. So it has a couple of additional benefits. So how does Envoy uh, fit into this? Envoy is actually already pretty good at managing multiple tenants, right? We, have, we can have multiple listener configurations, which means we can, we can actually run one listener per pod, per application running on that node to, for example, have different routing configuration, different filters, and so on. What we are currently adding, uh, what, we, what we need to complete is the resource management side, meaning that if you have a shared Envoy instance, one pod cannot consume all of the available resources for the shared Envoy. And the second aspect that we're working on um, is to actually make the control plane, for example, Istio aware of a shared Envoy model. Right now, what, with the concept we have right now, what we're using right now is concept of virtual Envoys, where even though you're running a single Envoy per node, that single Envoy instance will register itself multiple times as virtual Envoys to Istio. So from an Istio perspective, it's still 15 or 20,000 Envoys, but you're actually only running a couple of hundreds, one per node. Longer term, we would actually like to make uh, Istio aware of like the shared Envoy model as well, so we can, we, can re we, we can reduce the communication that's required from control pane to Envoy. With that, um, all of this development is currently happening in the SIG Envoy on the Cilium Slack. If, if you are interested in that, uh, feel free to uh, join our Cilium Slack, ping us there. There are multiple users there um, kind of working on setting this up. Uh, if you want to learn more about the Cilium project itself, it's open source, so you can go to the GitHub page and learn more about Cilium. And obviously, we also have a Twitter handle. 
I think we have a couple of seconds left for questions. And if that is not enough, feel free to uh, catch me outside after, uh, after the session. Yes. Yeah, so the question was kind of whether I can talk a bit about the resource isolation. Uh, the first objective there is that we simply make sure that we can set boundaries. For example, um, like each, each workload can only use, let's say, 10% of, 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 of the actual total resources allocated to Envoy. And then the second, uh, the second aspect we're working on is that you can limit the number of requests. But the fairness aspect is the most, uh, is the, is the, is the most important one. But that's, that's literally like what we're working on right now. We don't have like that. This is not fully done yet. Yeah, uh, yes, we have a design document. Like join the, join the, the, uh, the SIG Envoy and we can have pointers. All right, I think we're running out of time. Thanks a lot. Okay.